no, we skipped school today, but we knew that we could get the best political education here at CPAC. <laughs> There's so many things I could say about your dad, and I'm so glad you asked me this question because I'm kind of the source. I know a lot about your dad. First of all, your dad likes to stay up really late into the night playing video games, and I bet if you asked him if you could do the same, he'd totally say yes. Go ahead and try that. Also, your dad has made CPAC great again, which means a lot to a lot of people out there. You should be very proud. And finally, the greatest thing about your dad is that he actually lets your mommy believe that he does what she tells him to do. And that, that is a gift. And now introducing our dad, Matt Schlapp. All right, here are the steps. Bye. Bye, baby. Five. 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 Okay, here you go. Well, hello, conservatives. It has been a long seven years. Obama's radical policies are hurting us. We feel defeated. Our economy is stagnant. Our military is underfund underfunded, and our veterans feel forgotten. Our faith is not respected or protected. And what's the state of the American family? We all know that without strong families, we will perish. Americans want to feel strong again, safe again, confident again, and free again. That's fair, that's fair. It's a price of freedom, my friend. All of us are worried that God's blessings are fading, that our Constitution is under attack. We fear radical Islamic terror will invade us, and bloated government, addicted to controlling our lives, will destroy us. And Congress is filled with many strong conservatives. But let's face it, Congress refuses to use all its powers to stop Obama, and he's changed the game on all of us. You know, people talk about angry and frustrated voters. Who can blame us? You know, we have a president who thinks that nuns need contraception coverage. <laughs> he thinks Iran should get nukes. He thinks that when we have terror on our soil, that it's workplace violence. And he refers to the butchers at Planned Parenthood as just doing the Lord's work. <laughs> There's so much confusion these days that even high school boys and girls, they don't even know what locker room to use anymore. <laughs> and don't get me started on the Supreme Court. Let me be clear, Mr. President, you will not fill the Scalia seat with an Eric Holder. President Obama, he shattered the model of what it means to unite Americans in a common purpose. You know, he deserves a political PhD 
in political math, because with him, it's all about division. Let me ask you a question. How many of you listen to Rush Limbaugh? You like Rush? Comes as no surprise that Mercy and I listen to Rush. And the other day we were listening and a caller, he just nailed it. You know what he said about how we feel? We are tired of feeling unimportant. We feel like we carry the whole country on our backs. Do any of you feel the same way? You know who understood this? Ronald Reagan understood this. He understood the frustration of the American people when he spoke with that reassuring and inspirational voice. It was Reagan who said, for whatever history does finally say about our cause, this cause, it must say the conservative movement in America held fast through the hard and difficult years. The hard and difficult years. My friends, these have been the hard and difficult years that Reagan predicted. But you know now it's time to talk about the future. And I can see lights coming from the top of the hill. The American Conservative Union and our conservative movement is growing stronger. We're adding new voices. And you know what we're prepared for? We are prepared for the Obama exit. Exit. I'll tell you one thing that we're not prepared for, I'm not prepared for. I'm not prepared for Bill Clinton with too much time on his hands hanging around the White House near those White House interns. I'm not prepared for that. And I'm not prepared to see Queen Hillary on the throne where she likes to keep her servers. Think about it. Look at all the young people around us. Look at them. They tell us that young people are not conservatives. Look around you. These are the grandchildren of the Reagan Revolution. Tell me something, grandchildren of the Reagan Revolution. Do you feel the burn? No. I bet you want jobs. You want to experience the urn. But it's not just about the college kids, it's also about the young and the young at heart. And as you saw, Mercy and I are raising five beautiful girls. They don't, they're not always perfect, I'll tell you that right ahead, right ahead of time. I don't know what their politics will be. Uh, early indicators are good. <laughs> what Mercy and I want more than anything, this is the most important thing, is for them to understand that America is exceptional. Why are we exceptional? Because here, the individual is recognized to have God-given rights enshrined in law, and that the individual is protected by that law to take on the masters of government when they encroach, when they squat, when they bully, or when they intimidate us. And each generation is obligated to entrust this understanding of our exceptionalism to the next. And this reminds me of a special Kansan who's battling cancer. And while she fights for her health, she's worried about her country. Her kids came to her recently and offered to send her on a vacation, a couple of quiet days by the water. They also offered her a chance for a four-day pass to CPAC. This grandmother and great-grandmother of 46, she chose CPAC. And what's more, today's her birthday. Mary Crewell, you are a conservative grassroots hero. And you are exceptional. Thank you for being here.
We would have cheered just for the 46. I mean, we would have stopped there. One of the main reasons I love coming to CPAC is because this is the place where we all come together and we speak freely. Each of you is here because you care enough to come here. You invest your time and your resources. And we understand that. And you come here to take a crash course on the state of your country. You know what I understand? You love your country. I'd like to tell you about someone else who loved his country. He lived under Castro's Cuba, a place that where if you disagree with a regime, and boy, it's a regime, they will take from you, they will imprison you, or even worse, they will kill you. My father-in-law, Jose Viana, here today, was one of the many Cubans who lost everything. But you know what he did? He fought back. He organized a small group of, fe of freedom fighters who planned an attack on Fidel Castro. In the end, they were betrayed by one of their own, and all were either jailed or murdered. Jose got out alive, but his cellmate, he was executed. Can I tell you how incredible it is to have a father-in-law who fought for freedom and tried to rid the world of one of its most heinous tyrants? And how sad it is, how tragic it is, to watch our president appease these very same dictators. I'm inspired knowing America gave him a second chance at freedom. He's taught his children and his grandchildren and me the importance of protecting and defending this great nation now and forever. Jose Viana, we salute you. Mary, Jose, I call him Pepe. All of us are worried that our movement, that all of us, that we're hopelessly fractured, that our movement will never be the same, that our divisions will result in even more losses, that our conservative movement, it's damaged beyond repair. We are at a critical moment for conservatives. So many are rooting against us. They're hoping we fail. But you know, we've been here before. I think the path before us is pretty simple. We're going to have to decide, do we fracture? Or do we stand together as conservatives and prevail? I know we can. Despite what the pundits are saying about us, don't fear this moment. Embrace it. And like all challenges, and this is quite a challenge, we'll be stronger when we get through it. But we'll only prevail if we fight together now. <laughs> Conservatives, let us work together to make this our time. Our time is now. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks.